911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton, joined by Detective Walton. Clint, how are you? I'm good. I wasn't planning on recording this episode. I have everything mapped out when it comes to everything that we record. Obviously, when it's not a live interview, then these episodes are pre-recorded. But something just came to me, and it's one of those things where you and I didn't get much time to talk about it, and I thought it would be relatable and something that we could discuss here on air. And the main point that I kept coming back to when I was ruminating on these thoughts for this topic that I want to talk about with you is the fact that so many of us have changed. And I know that we have changed because of the conversations that I've had, deep conversations that I've had. We have changed post-COVID. And I mean that in, in, a, lot of, in a lot of just the the relevant and surface level term, but I also mean that on a physical level, because I know so many people that, of course, we have a dramatic increase in suicides, especially suicides in children. We have this, California, I feel embarrassed to live here. We had that instance where there was 150,000 fentanyl pills that were discovered by those two individuals that California just decided to like, oh yeah, let them go. Mm -hmm. And they're just out there roaming on the streets doing the same thing, most certainly. Um, So we've had the fentanyl increase, which of course contributes to additional deaths in our, in our country. And the, the level of just angst and mental instability that's taken place because of what this country And the leadership in our country has allowed to have happen has changed so many people. And further discussions that I've had as it pertains to us being so different now post-COVID is the physical attributes. I know that after Clint and I got COVID, Clint and I still can't taste and smell things in the same way. So that fucking sucks. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, I've had some female issues so much to the extent that I've gotten some tests like at home tests to be able to take and send in for different blood work panels and things just something feels so different and it's like that for everybody that I talk to everybody has a story and going further there are people who have lost others due to COVID or you know suicide or however they've lost people within these last two years and then that's changed their life and then going even further, there are people like my father who I've, I've been raised in a pretty conservative, moderately, rep, rep, I would say, Republican household. And now, because my dad, <laughs> during these two years, was forced to stay home so much and be glued to television because he's not very tech savvy. So he doesn't really check out news on his phone or apps and things like that that I rely on. He's become so brainwashed. And the things that come out of his mouth, I just stop in awe of, like... <laughs> you've got to be kidding right now, right? Like I'm waiting for the punchline and for us to start laughing together, but that punchline doesn't seem to come more and more often. And Clint came home to me this week and said that somebody that we know died. And he's sharing with me the details, the the intimate details of this death. And this is an angler. This is somebody that we go fishing with. He's a deckhand on a boat that we've gone out of and chartered fishing trips for many officers for Years. 10 years yeah. now, I want to say. And it was shocking to me because we are getting ready to charter another fishing trip for, another fishing trip for some officers. And the first thing that I do as I'm thinking about, you know, the, the upcoming trip and trips from the past is I go back and I look at all these pictures that I have of all these giant fish that I've caught. And there's me, the fish, and right next to me, there's, there's Keith. His mm-hmm. name is Keith. And... To know that this upcoming trip is going to be so different because he won't be there, it changes more, right? Even more has now changed. And then I think about the life of the owner of the boat. I think of the life of the captain of the boat and how different life must be. I'm looking at the report and I see that on on June 23rd, it was the only day that there's no fishing count. And that was because that was the day that Keith died. So obviously they it was unexpected and they didn't go out fishing that day. And there's so much that is so different now. And it makes us 
different as individuals, but we're also so different as a society because I think about the overturning of Roe v. Wade and we're not going to get into a political discussion about that today, but that's just an additional element of creating a social divide amongst us. I think about, you know, the 4th of July and we just had in Ohio, there was these officers that that shot a man some ridiculous, like 60 or 90 times, like, and of course he was black and it's a whole racial divide. There's an increase in divide and life is just so different. And it's because we are also so different and it, you know, I I go into these thoughts of conspiracies and it's difficult not to because I've never had this feeling as in a in a body in this vessel. I've never carried around this kind of physical feeling before and I've never carried around these kind of emotional feelings before. And I've also never had such relatability where the one thing that we can all agree on, at least so much to the extent of people that I've been fortunate enough to have these deep conversations with is that they too are feeling the exact same thing. Yeah, and and I see this, and no matter what side of the fence you stand on, I, I'm seeing it more and more. And and one, we have a, I would say, just looking at the divide that we have in, in general as a society, there's not only a societal divide, there's a generational divide that I've never seen before. And it's not just because I'm getting older. It's, I I went to a whole bunch of houses yesterday, talked to victims of families who, uh, or victims and their families of who shared the child exploitation imagery, not in an illegal way, but their kid was baited into sending these pictures and and their solution, well, I'm going to take away their phones. I'm going to take away all technology to never allow them to do this again. But then the reality is behind it is if you do that, you're just prolonging the inevitability of it happening again. Instead of educating and training and, and doing this stuff on a different level, we're so stuck in our ways, It's try, it's hard to change that mindset, which I don't, I don't understand this whole social media realm of wanting to send this stuff and and only communicate through social media. But I guarantee go out, talk to kids nowadays in a safe manner. Don't go and just talk to random kids because that would be strange, but ask them, how do they communicate with their friends? And as I'm seeing more and more, they're not texting, they're not calling, they're talking to them through Snapchat Messenger, through Instagram Messenger, and that is the normal now. And if you don't allow that to happen, they're ostracized by their friends because they're not able to communicate that way. And this is just an example of the overall divide that we're seeing more and more, especially generationally, societally, and and it's just progressing. And, And it's crazy how everything that we've experienced in the last two years has led us to this point. And, and it's just going to keep increasing. It's not, it's not getting better. It's getting worse. But there's good news about this because I've given this a lot of thought and it's been the solemn episode and I I don't want to end it that way. And I want to share some of the thoughts that I've had as to how to work through this on a personal level. And this is just based on patterns and habits that I hone in on that I see from myself and that I've seen from other people. And the first thing, we talk about it all the time, but I want to keep talking about it all the time because it's that important. And that is to have a good diet with social media, have a good diet with any type of media that you consume on a regular basis. So What does that actually mean? How does that look like for me as an example? I will spend 20 to 30 minutes a day, that is it, consuming content via social media, consuming content via the new subscriptions that we have. We, you know, we pay for um, the Epic Times, for example. So that's all that I get. And once that time is gone, then I don't get to go and see what all the chatter is and what other people are talking about when I hear it somewhere else. When I'm getting ready in the morning, I like to consume content that is, you know, it's very methodical when I'm doing my makeup. And so consuming content is very easy for me to comprehend when I'm doing that. So I will consume um, deeper levels of communication in that way. So podcasts like Charlie Kirk or The Daily Wire, like things like that, that have really deep 
connotations or I will consume um, other types of con- like right now I'm listening to a political book, like an, an ebook on Audible. So that's also something that I like to do. And when people reach out to me and they want to talk about things politically throughout my day, I don't even look at the I don't open the text message. I keep it there and I know that it's there so that I remember to go back to it, but I don't open it. So I, it's very easy for us to read the first couple of lines and we know why somebody's reaching out to us. And that's a very healthy behavior for me because I don't want my train of focus with work to be altered because somebody wants to talk to me about the latest headline that they've read on the news. So that's also something. Um, going deeper, focusing on myself. You know, Clint got me a karaoke machine for my birthday and that sounds so mundane and simple, but... Just yesterday, Clint called me and asked me what I was doing, and I told him I needed to close the laptop, and I was going to work out, actually, so I went into the gym, and as soon as I turned on that button for the karaoke machine, I sat down and I started singing, and so it turned out, for me, I didn't need the endorphins of working out in that moment. I needed the endorphins of singing, which is something that I truly enjoy to do, and it makes me very happy and feel complete, so there are many things like that that we all have. Um, We had some really good, healthy food, and Again, this is going to sound simple, but there are things that feed our soul, things that we need to identify that feed our soul, that allow us to feel more of real life and to not feel like we're some experiment living in the meta universe, which is another conversation. (laughs) But Clint got some key limes and I had cucumbers. And then somebody sent me this huge tray, like an ice cube tray with these two by two cavities. And so I cut some cucumbers up put some key lime juice in them, filled it up with water and froze them. And it is so delicious having these giant ice cubes, which are incredibly aesthetically pleasing, but then also to have the flavors inside of the infused water in that way. So there are such small things that we can do going outside. And, you know, I sprayed down buttercups yesterday and then she came up to me and gave me a hug and just allowing myself to be in that moment and to actualize reality and real life as it pertains to me personally, right? The headlines don't don't always pertain to us personally. I shared some advice with somebody yesterday and I said, make sure that you're always consuming your news content by reading it before you watch it. And what does that mean? That means that make sure that when you are consuming something to be alleged news, yes, alleged news, that you're allowing your own narration while you're consuming it before you allow the emotion and narration of somebody else to infiltrate that information. So think on that. I think that is super, super important. So these are just a couple of tips, things that I've been thinking on, some shifts and adjustments that I've been doing to recalibrate the way that I'm operating so that I don't get sucked into this vortex. And it's so easy to get sucked into that vortex. And um, we all need to think about it and help each other and support each other out. So I hope you've gotten some value out of today's episode. If you have, do us a favor, drop a review, subscribe down below. And as always, know that I'm sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.